Welcome back to the 19th part in this Python series for beginners. In this one we're going to talk about how we can use something called pip to install uh, what is essentially some Python code written by someone else that they decided to share online that we can then access and install using our Python project uh, as if it was our own code and simply not have to maintain it. So we can use pip to do that and it installs the the packages from something called PyPI, the Python package index. Now we do this in big projects to be able to install these dependencies or packages so that we don't have to rewrite something that someone else has written. So this makes it much faster for us to be able to sort of build that layer of abstraction and sort of build something that's much more capable much more quickly. Let's go ahead and first we need to create something called a virtual environment. A virtual environment is a good way to be able to separate your Python projects and say you're working on two Python projects and they each have dependencies. Well sometimes you might get the scenario where uh, two projects use the same dependency but one project would like to use or it'd be beneficial to use perhaps a new feature that's come coming out in the latest version but you have another project that might depend on the on the older version so we use virtual environments to be able to completely separate the versioning of the dependencies that you're using in your project and that allows us to be able to have less sort of version conflicts as well as it's just much more easy to switch between projects that have uh, large amounts of dependencies often utilizing the same ones in multiple projects and uh, often diff different versions as well. So let's go and create that virtual environment and this is how I'm going to teach you to create a virtual environment, although do be aware that there are other ways of installing a virtual environment. In fact there's a few uh, third-party packages on the Python package index that are going to help you uh, maybe make this process smoother when you sort of get used to working in a virtual environment. But the way that I'm going to show you is not going to require any third-party uh, packages uh, and this is probably the easiest way in my opinion just to get straight up and running and in, into a virtual environment. So this is what we're going to do. If we say, right, what version of Python do we want to use? In this series we're using Python 3.5 so I'm just going to say Python 3.5 now, if this is going to work for you, you can hit enter now, and that's the Python interpreter for Python version 3.5.2. If that doesn't work for you, you can say uh, Python. So in my case, this gets me to Python 2.7, which is uh, pre-installed on my Mac by default. I could also say Python 3, but that is essentially the same as 3.5.2, and I can know that by saying which Python Python 3, so that actually shows me where exactly this version of Python is located, and for our purposes this is the version that we're going to use, so you'll notice that that is the same as if I did 3.5 explicitly, it points to, uh, well essentially the same place, but I guess I have uh, two different installations of that apparently. So let's go ahead and create the virtual environment by uh, using that Python interpreter, so I'm going to say Python, let's pick 3.5, just to be explicit, and I'm going to use pip to do this. So I'm going to do dash m to say use pip as a module. If you don't know what pip is, or if you don't know what that means for now, just don't worry about it. But now I'm going to use vmv. So vmv is built into Python, it's been in the Python standard library since version 3.3, but it only used pip by default in version 3.4, so just be aware of that if you're using older versions. Now, if we go ahead and do that, uh, well, we need to name our virtual environment, so let's just say uh, vm3.5 uh, for virtual environment 3.5. Now, if we do that, that is going to create us a folder inside uh, whatever our current working directory is. So to see what that directory is, that is, at the moment uses YouTube documents and if we have a look in that we can say uh, let's say ls and then grep for uh, our virtual environment so vm 3.5 so you can see it's been created as a folder within my documents folder here and 
What I can do to then activate it, which is the last step before you can actually install the Python package, is do source and then the name of the virtual environment, so vm35 forward slash bin forward slash activate. So this is going to run a script that changes some environment variables that essentially allows us to cleverly manage the uh, versions of our packages as well as Python itself so that we can use a virtual env for e any uh, project that we want and not have the sort of context that I described previously. So doing that you can see the uh, terminal by default changes to prepending the name of the virtual environment in brackets or in parentheses at the start of the line here. So now you can see quite clearly that we are in a virtual environment. And now we can do something like pip install uh, requests. So requests is a popular Python package on the Python package index and we install it using this command pip or pip install. So if we do that you can see it goes away and it gets the uh, by default again, the latest version uh, you can see here is compatible with Python 2 and Python 3 and we've got a little warning message to say we're not on the latest version of pip so you can run this command to upgrade it if you want but for now that's going to be fine if you want to see the list of Python packages that we have installed you can just do pip list and now you can see everything that is installed in this virtual environment. So by default when we created it we had pip installed uh, which was useful because that allowed us to actually install other things and setup tools. That's just something else that we have uh, by default when we create uh, one of these virtual environments. And of course we have the package that we've just installed called requests. So now we can go ahead and write Python code that utilizes requests as long as we're in this virtual environment. Now a couple of things to note. You see I did pwd earlier, so print working directory. If this has spaces in it, at least on uh, Mac or Linux, that is going to be a problem. So make sure that your uh, current place that you are in, so, you, so you, the current folder, if you do pwd you shouldn't see any spaces here. So for example if I did uh, cd into the Python basics, then I did print working directory, I would be able to create the virtual environment but running pip would be an issue because it doesn't like spaces in there or at least it won't work straight away by default. Finally to get out of this virtual environment once you're finished working on the Python project for now you can do deactivate and that'll just get you back to the normal uh, terminal that you're used to. But if I try now to do source and then the name of the virtual environment I had so vm35 uh, for example and then bin activate you'll you'll notice that it, it doesn't work. And the reason for that is because you have to be in the same folder that you created the virtual environment in, uh, at least the way that we're doing it. There are other ways to manage this, of course, but you you have to be in the same directory. So I, I did it in the documents folder. And the reason that you have to be in the same directory is that the script that we were running here, so vm35, which is the virtual environment folder, uh, bin activate. That is a script which is at of course a specific location, it's just essentially a file stored on your computer that happens to be executable using this source command. Now if you're not in the right folder then it won't be able to find that. But that's really going to get you up and running really quickly as long as you have the virtual environment activated. 